Dickerson. Thank you. Uh, once again, uh, my name is John Ensminger. I'm with the Southern Nevada Water Authority and the current CRUA uh, president. Uh, I'm delighted to be here uh, with a couple of different groups of people who are all in their own way working so hard to protect the river that all of us depend upon. We're here today to sign three different agreements. The first is the Memorandum of Understanding uh, to move forward with what has commonly become known as the 500 plus plan, a plan that makes additional commitments of $200 million, a million acre feet of water to try to prevent Lake Mead from falling to even worse elevations than we sit at today. The second is a set of historic agreements between the Gila River Indian community and the Colorado Indian tribes and the US Bureau of Reclamation. And the fourth is a resolution with non-governmental organizations from the conservation community uh, with the governor's representatives of the three lower division states memorializing our intent to cooperate uh, in conserving water for the good of the entire river community. Uh, there will be a photo uh, after each of the sessions, so we're going to go ahead and get started. But before we do, I do want to uh, welcome the two commissioners uh, from each section of the International Boundary and Water Commission, uh, Marina Elena uh, Hiner uh, with the U.S. section, and Adriana Resendez with the Mexican section. Uh, Commissioner Hiner, I welcome you to CRUA. Uh, and look forward to working with you. Uh, Commissioner Resendez, uh, anyone who worked with you, as I was fortunate to do on minutes 319 uh, and 323, uh, knows how passionate you are, how committed you are to making this uh, river work for both countries, uh, the fantastic people uh, we have both at Canagua and Sila, and look forward to continuing uh, now that the President of Mexico has appointed you to this new role. So with that, I will first turn to Assistant Secretary for Water and Science, uh, Tanya Trujillo, for initial remarks. Thank you, John. Thank you very much. It is delightful to be here with all of you back at CRUA and to be part of this presentation and, and celebration this afternoon. As we heard this morning, as a result of drought and climate change, the hydraulic projections indicate that our reservoirs will be continuing to decline. As you also heard, the Department of the Interior and the Bureau of Reclamation stand ready to be full partners and to take prompt action along with our partners to respond to the urgent conditions we are facing. In the memo that I approved supporting this agreement, I stated that the MOU we are going to be signing today the MOU will allow the Department of the Interior and its partners to demonstrate their commitment to fund voluntary compensated investments in water conservation to maintain Lake Mead and, and especially following the extraordinarily dry winter and in advance of the first ever year of required shortage reductions in the lower basin on the Colorado River. We are taking these agreements today and they represent, <coughs> excuse me, we are signing these agreements today and they represent the next set of actions we are taking to continue to protect Lake Mead and they are in addition to the programs and contributions that are already in place as a result of the DCP and the 2007 interim guidelines. As we implement these new conservation programs, we will all need to work together to develop even larger strategies and permanent solutions. The bipartisan infrastructure law gives our department the resources and tools that we need to face the challenges ahead. We appreciate and welcome the broad range of partners that we have to work with in the basin as we jointly develop these solutions. Thank you very much. I am pleased to um, be part of this program, but the agreement was signed earlier today by Commissioner Tootin, and I invite my, our partners in this effort to execute the agreement as well today. Thank you. Uh, next, we have uh, brief remarks from the General Manager of the Metropolitan Water District of Southern California, 
Adel Taj Khalil. Thank you very much and great to be with you here today. I'm honored to be joined with the chair of our board of Metropolitan Water District Southern California, uh, Gloria Gray. Uh, I'm speaking here on behalf of the Lower Basin partners, including Southern Nevada, Arizona, and Metropolitan. Signing this MOU today is a call for action, a call for action for all of us, and underscores our commitment to work together in collaboration to solve one of the most compelling challenges we face. It's a strategic, voluntary movement by Lower Basin water users and the federal government to help bring some near-term stability to our uncertain future on the river. A few years ago when we signed the 2019 Lower Basin Drought Contingency Plan, we hoped it would provide some breathing room to give us enough time to negotiate the necessary long-term solutions to the imbalance of the river. But we all have seen just how quickly the conditions have continued to deteriorate. This is real progress and we're moving in the right direction. Thankfully, the lower basin water users have recognized that we don't have a lot of time to waste and we have recommended and committed ourselves to collaborate and to do even more. The 500 plus plan is a work in progress that unites Arizona, Nevada, and California with our partners in the federal government. It expands our existing partnership and relationship with agricultural districts, tribal nations, and NGOs. The addition of 500,000 acre feet or more of water to the reservoir every year for the next two years will reduce the risk of reaching those critical elevations and enable us to continue working together to develop a long-term sustainable future for the entire river. To be clear, solutions will only come when we work together in collaboration. And the examples of collaboration are plentiful. Arizona has doubled down its work with its tribes and ag agricultural partners. We are watching Southern Nevada Water Authority work hard with this legislator to take very aggressive water conservation measures by prohibiting decorative and non-functional turf. And I'm uh, very proud that Southern Nevada Water Authority and Arizona are helping fund and advance Metropolitan's proposed water recycling project, which will be the largest recycling program in the nation. Metropolitan is also working with agencies in our region that serve 19 million Southern Californians and our agriculture partners, like PVID, IID, and Coachella. Also, as new partners to our programs, including Bard Water District and the Kitsan Tribe. We're very pleased to see the federal government financial participation and commitment, and we can ask for more gracious and great partner and support of, from the assistant uh, uh, administrator here, Tony Trujillo, uh, <laughs> which will match the lower basins contributions and enable all of us to find the water we need to make the 500 plan plus plan work. In short, we're not going to abandon the Colorado River. We're not going to turn our backs to it. We're not gonna turn against each other. This MOU solidifies that we are one. One water, one river, many partners. So thank you, I look forward to signing this agreement. Uh, and lastly, b before we sign, uh, I would like to welcome uh, Pat uh, Terrell from the state of Wyoming. Pat is representing our partners in the four uh, upper division states uh, today. Thank you for joining us, Pat. Thank you, John. First of all, let me commend the Lower Basin for working to reduce demand on the Colorado River system and Lake Mead. Acknowledging past actions under the 07 guidelines and the DCP the 500 plus plan is the next step to the larger solution of bringing overall demand into sync with the supply this river is giving us. And it is not painless. That part is self-evident. The 500 plus plan is quick action to respond to the quickly deteriorating conditions we face. We understand that it draws upon significant investment to minimize impacts to lower basin users. There is no effective approach to the imbalance that doesn't impact some water user somewhere. Upper basin users see it, 
in significant shortages to uses that have never been fully developed. The lower basin sees it as painful shortages to full uses that have existed for some time. Quick action is necessary throughout the basin. The upper basin has been and continues to work hard on procedures to implement drought response operations if necessary and at the same time we continue to investigate the feasibility of a potential demand management program. We are developing lists of projects and ideas that can benefit from the federal funding we all have available from recent legislation to help sustain the river long term. There is no corner to which either basin is afraid to turn to measure, monitor, conserve, and manage our water under the law of the river for the ultimate benefit of the whole basin and all who rely upon the river. The 500 plus plan is, as some have opined, a temporary solution. Work toward longer term solutions to the challenges worsening hydrology presents us is left for another day a day which we all know is coming very soon. In the end, our overarching goal must be to work toward a sustainable future for the Colorado River Basin, period. That future includes the commitments to the laws that govern us, it includes the tribes and the environment that call this river basin home. It includes our irrigators, our municipalities and industries. The new normal is not the old normal. My apologies to Brad Udall. <laughs> Our lives going forward must recognize a river that could potentially deliver only two-thirds the amount they thought in 1922. If we are to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the 1922 compact in any sincere sense next year, it must be in the way it reflects comedy, among seven states in Mexico, and all that are impacted even when the amount of water is less than what was thought available. The compact can accommodate and has accommodated innovative and collaborative solutions. As water users and managers, we just need to let it. <coughs> We've always found ways to allow this river uh, work to work for its inhabitants under the troublesome conditions it has presented for over 20 years. If we do our jobs and don't throw away all that work in good faith, we will do it again. We must. Too many interests rely on the river to let any other result take place. Okay, and since I'm a signatory as well as the MC, I'm going to get in here for the picture and then we'll move to the next phase. Okay, again, our thanks to the signatories of the MOU. Uh, please exit to the left. What? Oh, you want to sign it. <laughs> I thought we already signed it.
What's that? Excellent work, Tim. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Okay, now, <laughs> if, you're, if you're not staying up for the next panel, please exit to the left. Okay, uh, we are now going to turn to the execution of the agreements between the United States Bureau of Reclamation and the Gila River Indian community and the Colorado River Indian tribe. Will we please be joined on stage by Governor Stephen Rowe Lewis uh, and Tribal Chairman Emilio Flores. Okay, thank you for your patience, everyone. Uh, while uh, we make sure that the chairwoman is okay, uh, we're, we're gonna shift and move to the, the signing of the resolution with the NGOs, and then we'll come back uh, to this part of the, the program once every, we make sure she's okay. So, um, the NGO community is obviously an extremely important partner in the Colorado River. Uh, we've worked with uh, many organizations for, for decades, but at this juncture, uh, we really hear a lot from them about wanting to be partners, wanting to step up, uh, and having real resources to help us uh, meet the needs of this river uh, moving into the future. So we have a couple of uh, representatives here today, uh, but they represent a much broader coalition of interest groups, and that, is, and that coalition is now including major corporations, including Google, Facebook, and Procter & Gamble, who are making real investments in the Colorado River. So with that, I would like to call up the representatives for the resolution signing, uh, who are Tom Bichotsky with the Arizona Department of Water Resources, uh, Eric Witkowski with the Colorado River Commission in Nevada, Kevin Moran with Environmental Defense Fund, Todd Reeve with Business for Water Stewardship, and Peter Nelson with the Colorado River Board of California. So I know uh, at least a couple folks want to make some remarks. Uh, Kevin, you want to go first? Yes, thank you, John. It's an honor today to be here representing EDF and conservation partners together with my fellow signatories, all of us committed to bolstering the climate resilience of the Colorado River Basin. This resolution is a recognition that we must plan for the river that climate scientists tell us we're probably going to have, not the one that some of us remember or the river we might wish for. It's a recognition of an urgent need to increase both the pace and scale of collaborative water conservation agreements and investments in resilience across the entire basin. The 500 plus plan that we just saw memorialized is an important step on this path and accomplished on an accelerated time frame that was historic. And I want to commend all the parties to the 500 plus plan for announcing it, for the tribes who are part of it, and for the implementing agreements and the work that's ongoing. On the same path, 
EDF is proud to have helped to ensure the success of the CRIT System Conservation Project by joining with Business Water Stewardship and my colleague Todd Reeve and his team, corporate partners, Audubon, and philanthropic funders to contribute $8 million toward the agreement. We trust that it won't be the last multi-sector investment for resilience in the basin or the last time that tribal leadership like that shown by Chairwoman Flores and by leaders like Gila River Indian Community leader Governor Stephen Rowe Lewis will be indispensable to equitable and durable solutions. Today I represent many conservation nonprofit colleagues across the basin whose solution-oriented work aligns with the goals of this resolution. And I wanted to say that my partners at American Rivers and Western Resource Advocates asked me to confirm their support for this specific resolution. EDF and conservation partners will continue to be steadfast partners for improving basin resilience. Let's make the next chapter in the story of the iconic Colorado River be about people adapting to new water realities collaboratively, equitably, and rapidly so that we sustain civilization and the natural systems that nourish all of us. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Todd, would you like to speak? Thank you, John. I'm very pleased to be here today representing business partners and the tremendous potential to leverage corporate leadership to scale up investment in lower basin resilience. This resol resolution acknowledges some of the many stakeholders that are prepared to work together to maximize impact, investment, and results. Business participation will be key to fully maximize our ability to address our shared water challenges. The lower basin holds unprecedented potential for corporate collaboration on water. Dozens of companies have already stepped up and they will continue to work with us to identify and invest in projects <coughs> and solutions that partner with tribes, nonprofits, states, utilities, and funders to enhance water resilience. The CRIT System Conservation Project serves as just one example of, an, of a, this unprecedented opportunity. Never before, a collective corporate funding model with 15 companies that represent diverse sectors. These are household names, as John mentioned, Google, Procter & Gamble, Target, Facebook, Silk Soy Milk, Keurig Dr. Pepper, fashion brand Reformation, and others coming together to collectively contribute millions of dollars to system conservation. In addition, these dollars were matched one-to-one -one with multiple philanthropic interests led in large part by Walton Family Foundation. More than ever before, companies are at the table. They're eager to step up, eager to invest and accelerate this work. Going forward, nonprofits like Blue Commons will work with us to establish revolving funds that can accelerate the development of water conservation and drought resilience. And partners like EDF, Western, Western Resource Advocates, and American Rivers will coordinate with tribes, municipalities, agencies, and philanthropic funders to effectively channel corporate funding into projects that expand our collective impact and create lasting benefits for people, business, and the environment. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. Okay, so uh, right before we sign, uh, I think it would be appropriate to actually read the effective portion of the, the resolution, which states, now therefore, the signatories below resolve to collaborate and coordinate to take action collectively and separately to seek effective consensus-based solutions, including both short-term and long-term reductions in Colorado River water use in accordance with the law of the river and actions that improve the resiliency of the basin to a warmer and drier climate in order to protect the long-term sustainability of the Colorado River system. And with that, I would invite everyone to execute all of the versions of uh, the signatory page.
Good job. Uh, so now we'll take a picture for, for this group. Very good. Uh, if you're done with this panel, please exit to your left. Okay, so once again, we have Assistant Secretary Trujillo, Chairwoman Flores, Governor Lewis, uh, and I believe uh, the first to speak will be Assistant Secretary Trujillo. Thank you, John. Sincere welcome to Casey, and I hope you're doing well. Thank you. Thank you all very much being here and and especially thank you to our tribal partners for your continued leadership and dedication to helping preserve our Colorado River system and in particular for helping to keep Lake Mead from hitting critical elevations. Tribal support has been very critical in connection with authorization of the drought contingency plan agreements and tribal contributions will enable those agreements to be fully implemented. On top of that, I am very pleased to be here today with the leaders of the Colorado River Indian tribes and the Gila River Indian community to thank them for their leadership and contributions as we finalize new agreements that will help conserve additional water in Lake Mead. With the addition of the water conserved to, through today's agreements, the Colorado River Tribes, the Fort McDowell Yavapai Nation, the Gila River Indian Community, and Tohono O'odham Nation will have contributed over 800,000 acre feet of water through system conservation and intentionally created surplus programs. That mount equals approximately 11 feet of elevation in Lake Mead. The close collaboration that we have with our tribal partners is essential as we continue to work on water management challenges during these times of increasing scarcity. Thank you all very much for your ongoing contributions and we look forward to our continued partnerships going forward. It's a pleasure to be here today to sign these agreements. Governor Lewis, would you like to say a few words?
Thank you, and skug tosh. I hope everyone is doing well. Since September, when I asked the major water policymakers in Arizona to our community for an emergency meeting, the community has been working with ADWR, CAP, SRP, and the United States to help develop this conservation plan, which benefits my people from the Gila River Indian community, Arizona, and the entire Colorado River region. Now this level of the crisis demanded speed, which was only possible based on the strong working relationships that we developed when crafting the original DCP. And I want to commend the Lower Basin States, the United States, for making so much progress so quickly to put the 500 plus plan together. So today, the Gila River Indian community is showing its commitment to the Colorado River region by executing agreements with the United States, reserving over 129,000 acre feet of our water in Lake Mead for the benefit of the entire system. This represents over one quarter of the 500,000 acre feet estimated to be needed from all three states. We're hopeful to be able to repeat this commitment in 2023 as well. Now this demonstrates the vital role that sovereign tribal nations can and are playing in helping to preserve the Colorado River. I want to acknowledge my fellow tribal leaders here, especially Chairwoman Flores of the Col Colorado River Indian Tribes uh, for being really key partners in, in working together on this plan. Now over the course of the next two years, we expect that we will together be putting over 300,000 acre feet of water into the lake, which today represents nearly five feet of elevation. From our initial meeting in late September to today, tribes have played a critical role that I'm so proud of in helping to make today happen. I truly believe that our sovereign nations, tribes, tribes are a vital part of this process because by bringing the parties together, fostering productive, cooperative dialogue and providing much needed critical resources, tribes shouldering this sacred responsibility, this leadership can and will help shape the future of the Colorado, Colorado River. Thank you. Thank you, Governor Lewis and Chairwoman Flores. Would you like to say a few words? What an entrance. Guchkamadu. <laughs> Colorado River Indian Tribes is happy to do our part towards the Lower Basin 500 plus plan. We are farmers at CRIT, and we have fallowed enough land in the past few years to leave over 200,000 acre feet of water in Lake Mead. <laughs> Colorado River Indian Tribes, by signing this agreement today, is on top of the five. 50,000 acre feet that we are leaving in Lake Mead as part of DCP this year. We are the Colorado River Indian Tribes, and I signed this on behalf of our people. The Colorado River has sustained us for many, many generations and we continue to live and walk along the banks of the Colorado River. It is time for all of us to help save this river, the Colorado River. I want to 
want to thank you for the opportunity to contribute our water to saving the life of the river. Thank you. And with that, I would invite the Assistant Secretary, the Governor, and the Chairwoman to sign the agreements. Very good, congratulations. So at this point, I would like to invite everyone involved in all three sets of agreements to come up in front of the stage and get a group picture. And then following that, we will have uh, press availability. Thank you all for coming. And to be